Yeah, like I said, I just wanted to jump on here at 9.45 to 10 every morning. Uh, just give everybody a you know, dose of inspiration, motivation, maybe a smiling face, whatever you could, uh, could use for the day. Uh, jump right off at, at 10. I know for the first couple of days we were talking about just you know, maybe giving it to 10.05 just as people come in a little later or whatever, but get into a, a routine. Um, we talked about Fitness Friday, and uh, I think we have good discussion around that. But uh, today I thought we'd coin it Mindful Monday. And uh, kind of talk about the other element of our of our real estate life, and that is uh, kind of where our mental mind space is at. You know how we're how we're feeling, and how that translates to um, you know to to our clients, to our customers. Who's uh, who's familiar with uh, EQ? So you're talking about emotional. Uh... Emotional like, intelligence, like, emotional IQ, IQ, but emotional. You can be emotional? <laughs> Is that what you said? Oh, I can, I can be emotional. You want to see? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can show me later, Charlie. <laughs> How about anybody else? Uh, anybody else familiar with it or spend much time kind of understanding no. that? Is that like... Um... Is it like part of a program where they discuss it or is it just like a well-known thing? No, it's think of it like um, uh, IQ, right? Where you, you can rank your intelligence and everybody's, you know, somewhat hard set as they, you know, uh, as they mature. But the emotional quotient here, I'll read you the, you know, kind of one of the definitions Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions uh, to positive. Oh, actually, let me read you this one. This one I like a little better. Uh, what is emotional intelligence or EQ? Emotional intelligence, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ, is the ability to understand, use, and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, emphasize. Uh, uh, empathize with others uh, and overcome challenges and diffuse conflict. You think that might be helpful? Just, just a little. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Michael? From what I'm gathering, um, I, I think it's very important to kind of understand where you're at on that emotional level, not just for yourself and how you're going to structure your day, but how you're portrayed to your clients and, and those that you're surrounding yourself with. So is that kind of what the EQ is? Is Yeah, I, I relate it to, you know, we're all somewhere in our headspace, right? Throughout the day, we're either on, you know, to keep it very simple, a good end of the spectrum or a bad end of the spectrum. Maybe I should go bad end of the spectrum, good end of the spectrum. Um, and how we go about our day affects who we are in our head and to the world, right? So understanding what puts us in a bad space and what puts us in a good space and then how that affects us, you know, I think it's super important. Um, I try as best I can to adjust as quickly as I need. You know, uh, I realize that the world, uh, the news, poor conversations, negativity, and all that start shifting my mindset and my overall kind of attitude towards the day, my emotions, my feelings in, in the wrong direction. Um, you know, it's kind of what you feed your body is how your body responds, how you feed your mind is how your mind responds. Absolutely. How about and, you, Carissa? Oh, sorry, Michael. Okay, real quick. Um, these numbers and figures could be way off because I heard this a long time ago, but I think many of you here probably have heard something similar. And it's the whole thing. If you had $500 and someone took 50 cents from you, would you be mad about that? It's like probably not, right? But if you equate that to time in a day and that same 50 cents is that one bad thing that happened to you, well, it doesn't just stop at that 50 cents. It can wreck your next four or five hours based on that one little incident. So that 50 cents is actually $150. And if it, you had $500, but someone took 150, 
that might suck a little. So when something does happen to you that's bad, it's just for that moment. How can you take a little bit of moment and just reset and get back on that train of that mindful, call it mindful Monday, right? Like yeah. You gotta get back on that good train so that one little incident doesn't affect your whole day. Something yep. that happens here at the office where you have to go to a showing, how you're presented in front of that showing, it could determine whether they want to buy the house or not. Yep. Yeah, people absolutely pick up on that. We talked about on Fitness Friday, like, am I confident? Do I feel healthy? Uh, do I feel good about, you know, uh, my, my health? And that translates to confidence, which then translates to your clients kind of one way or another. Uh, your mental attitude, your, your headspace of how you're coming to them, uh, either in a kind of, oh, I don't want to be here. Um, this is annoying. I got here late. You know, whatever stage you set, you know, in life and then in your head, um, your clients pick up on that immediately. And, you know, in order for us to build rapport, right, especially with lead gen, because these are people that called, they want to see a home, and now you're going out there for the first time. And that's that first impression. And you have to build rapport with them as quickly as you can. And uh, I think the two best ways you can build rapport are giving them the sense, the knowledge that you're there to serve them. You know, people love to be served and then they love to talk about themselves. And the best way you can serve them is understand them. So listen, but if your mind isn't there and you're in a funk, you know, you got a little bit of an attitude, you're discouraged, you're whatever, you can't do either one of those very well. You can't listen to them very well because you're thinking about your own stuff and you can't serve them very well because you didn't listen to them. That's kind of my take. Any thoughts, Chris? I see you on the video. Oh, you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if my phone was working or not. Um, no, I think that's all great. What's all been said, you know, not just with our clients though, we need to kind of keep in mind the emotional, aspect of when we're working with lenders or title companies um that's a big thing too because how we represent how we act with them even though sometimes they do screw up they're not perfect like we are just kidding we're not perfect um i had an issue with a, a lender that told me i didn't need it to be in a in a in this transaction i had no no part in it i could have blown up at him told him to grow a pair which is what i wanted to and say, suck it up, you're dealing with me. But I just said to him, be like, I'm here to help you just like you're here to help me. And if you feel that my worth for you is not is not gonna be help for, helpful for you, then you can continue to talk with the clients who chew you out every day. So he, he kind of had a different perspective. I got a phone call back because I handled that in a certain way, kind of kept my emotions out of it. He called me back a couple hours later and apologized. And he's just like, I, he's like, I do need you. I'm like, oh, well, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it's not just with our clients. It's, it's the whole industry that we need to kind of keep and keep our emotional status in check. There's going to be so many bumps in the road of things that we're dealing with. This morning, I had a closing at 930. I get there, my buyers don't have right. their ID. So I'm in the car right now driving to get their ID for them. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, be I can, uh, we can all be freaking out, but I'm like, you guys go sign papers. I'll catch up with you at the end. Yeah. So, that, that's a it's good all about point. perspective. Yeah. That's a good point. Everybody in our life helps us set that stage, right? We get up in the morning, our significant other, you know, wife, husband's in bed or whatever, and they've got an attitude. Like, you know, if we can't understand where our heads go, our heads go, right? If you understand that that person woke up with a headache or they just didn't sleep well or whatever, and their attitude can affect us, well, then guess what? We get affected. If we disconnect and realize where our head's at and that that isn't our day, uh, we can move on. So every interaction we have, everything we see, we read, you know, whatever, every conversation can affect us. The quicker we understand where we're at, the quicker we can correct it. So that, that's, at least that's, you know, how I choose to look at things. Um, so would it, would it be okay if next Monday we have, maybe we address the, the question of how do we get our head in the right space? Yep. Right? What, what do we do to prepare? Yep. I think it'd be a great topic for next Monday. 
Yeah, so um, kind of like Friday, uh, you know, I felt like taking a baseline of where we're at and see if we're making progress. Now, this one will be weird because I think as mindful, like I think I'm pretty mindful, but my guess is five years, 10 years down the road from now, I'm going to think I was oblivious. So it's a baseline for today. You know, uh, for those that didn't make it Friday, we came, uh, we came up with a scale of zero to 10 on the scale. Where are we at with our fitness, physical well-being life? Are we, are we exercising? Are we eating right? And then, you know, the hope is to encourage each other, you know, provide inspiration, give tips, techniques, value, and, and, and increase that over time. So I thought we'd do that today, uh, you know, as it relates to what we understand of EQ as quickly as we've heard about it. And as quickly as we processed about it, put a number to it. And then, Charlie, just like you said, go through it. Like, what can we do to best understand where we're at? What can we do best to understand what we do about what, where we're at when it's not a good thing or improve on it when it is a good thing? So uh, with that, uh, Michael, you want to, and, and again, this is like Friday. No judgment here. Uh, please just, you know, be honest. If you're in a funk and you, you just don't know where your head's at, like, we're not going to judge you for being a zero or a one. Um, we just, you know, I think it's good to to tell yourself the truth and others the truth, and then share and and grow. Um, Michael, is that something you'd you'd be up for sharing? Yeah, absolutely. And real quick, I'd love to share real quick that thirty seconds. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to wait till Friday or whatever. This isn't a scale like a one through ten, but the one thing that I do that because I go through ups and downs, everybody does. Um, it's my perfect daily schedule. If I don't have it written out the day before of what I'm going to do the next day, I'm lost because I get torn in different directions. People call you. But as long as I have that schedule and a purpose, you can feel accomplished. And without that, I'm lost. And that, for my mindset, is 100%. But I, for me, it's my schedule. Yep. Cool. Kind of where would you place your, your number, zero to, to 10? When I do my schedule, uh, just uh, right now, like where would you consider like your your knowledge of what you think EQ is and and um, how good you are at it? Uh, seven. Okay. How about you, Charlie? You want to share? Yeah, I'd I'd say um, it kind of goes up and down for me. Um, I I do have a process that I use every day that tries to get me actively engaged. Um, and I spend some time working on that. The days I don't, the numbers lower. Um, but I, I'd say I bounce between a nine, at, at, at eight and a nine, typically. Today, I'm probably a seven. Okay. And actually, as you're, you're talking, Charlie, it, it occurred to me, there's probably two numbers. Like, just based upon the description, uh, what do you think, like, uh, how, how much of that do you do in your day? How much adjustment or awareness do you have in your state of mind? Is that what you're referring to, Charlie? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, if I don't get my day started correctly, then how I deal with the things throughout the day, I find myself having to regroup. I find myself behind the curb. I find myself having to sit, sit myself down and say, okay, why do I have this hostility or this frustration that's boiling up behind the scenes that's making the words come out of my mouth or, or not. Yeah. Uh, I'm not engaging correctly, or maybe, maybe I've met with somebody and it didn't go the way I wanted. And then I, the reflection is, yeah. So then, then it's like, well, you know, I wasn't for this moment. So for me, it, and it does it throughout the day, you run into stuff. And sometimes as we say, you get the crap sandwich thrown at you. And so, it's being able, and I think by, by practicing EQ and making it a conscious function every day, uh, you know, for me, it's first thing, really asking myself and having some, I, I just call it my devotion time, right? The time I dedicate toward how is my day? What's it going to be? How do I want to choose to act today? What are the things that I've dealt with in the last day or two that I've put to bed and what's the successes there? I go through that first thing in the morning and then that makes the rest of the day makes me more resilient. Yep. Yep. How about you, Chris? How do you feel about gauging your mindset throughout the day? Well, yeah, we're going to have triggers throughout the day that are going to throw us off and bring that number down. Um, I could have got my number. I, I felt like, well, crap, we're going to be holding up this morning with everything. But 
Um, it's all about just keeping that mindset with the EQ, like we talked about, and then setting that routine for yourself. Like the routine's not going to happen every day. I didn't get my workout this morning. I haven't even had anything to eat or drink and I could be losing my shit on somebody. So, but I feel really good right now. <laughs> okay, cool. So it sounds like you're, you're so, pretty aware of what that stuff does to you. Yes. Yep. So would you say a seven or eight as well? Kind of like Michael and Charlie? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Andrew, how do you think you do on awareness, bud? Uh, just as far as where I'm at? Yeah, like, uh, do you gauge throughout the day where your head is at and adjust accordingly? Or uh, do, you, do you find yourself letting life kind of uh, bounce you around a little bit? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, do you feel like you, you know where your head's at at any point and can you correct it fairly quickly? Yeah, I mean, as I've gotten older, I feel like I've gotten better at, you know, kind of adjusting um, and or kind of catching the thought and then not letting it ruin the rest of my day. Um, yeah. I'm not perfect, of course, but I always try my best to make that happen. Uh, so I'd say like probably right now I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good. So probably like an eight or nine. Eight or nine. Okay, cool. Leslie, you want to share? Sure. I, I mean, I yo-yo like everyone, but I love Mondays. So I'm probably at a nine. I love, it's like a, the fresh start of the week. And I love the feeling of a good Monday morning. Yeah. Well, good. Most people get all bummed out because, you know, that's what we've been told to do. <laughs> Let's see. Mark, any thoughts? Yeah. Um, I'm right there with Leslie. Like, I'm at eight or nine today. I get hyped up in the beginning of the week, but as the day goes on and the week goes on, I kind of get a little more sidetracked and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, what's your thoughts? Did you want to put a number to that? Um, mine, like everybody else, really just depends on the day. Um, what life throws at you. If my kids are naughty in the morning, get their bums out of bed. Just kidding. <laughs> but, um, no, they, overall, I would say probably like a six or seven. I feel like if I kind of like set goals for things I need to accomplish that day, it really helps me. Um, but um, yeah, right around there. Okay. How about you, Lisa? Um, I would say I'm, I think dealing with a lot of people who, who aren't very emotionally intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> grow your emotional intelligence and being a landlord, I've dealt with a lot of people. <laughs> so I think that mine's pretty high. Um, but again, it also depends on the setting. <clears throat> like, I think we are all, all maybe kind of lose it more at home. At least I do. Um, but I would say pretty good, like, you know, nine solid nine. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm hoping this is going to be helpful to just, you know, again, get us started. Again, I, I think just being able on a moment by moment basis, you know, where we've, we've heard, uh, you know, be in the present, be in the moment. And there's a lot to that as you begin to understand what that means and things that drag us down, you know, looking back, something that happened in the past or being concerned about something in the future, that's not being in the present, but that affects our mood, our state of mind. So, you know, my hope as we start talking about this is we, we talk about, we understand and create an awareness of that our minds can very quickly shoot off into a direction, whether it's good or bad. And unfortunately, because of life, it's a little discouraging anyway. So it's almost always bent in the wrong direction, in the negative direction. Um, so it's an active effort for us to put positivity into it, right? We can all find a negative friend. That's pretty easy it's not super easy to find a positive friend or a, co a positive conversation, right? You turn on the news, you're not gonna find a positive news clip is my guess, right? I mean, it would be tough to find. So um, I just wanted to get a baseline, understand uh, you know, what, what it kind of means, where we're at, and then move it forward. And then as Lisa said, the very important part of real estate is understanding that our clients do that too. Like they were fine a minute ago, Five minutes later, they're all kinds of sideways. You know, that leads into understanding empathy. 
Um, if we can understand how our mind works and how it moves and bounces all over the place, then we can understand how our clients do it. And then we help, you know, being empathetic for them and then um, helping them, you know, up their attitude about the situation, right? Keeping them positive, right? It's stressful. It's anxiety inducing. So we've got to contend with our emotional state first, because if we don't, we're not being helpful to them. And then we have to understand them well. Anyway, a lot of rambling, um, but hopefully this will at least, you know, get us started in the direction for, for my, Mindful Monday. Michael, is there anything you wanted to kind of add as we wrap it up here? Uh, it sounds good. I really appreciate you putting this together and it's always good to stay top of mind in your own mind of where you're at. So if you're always thinking about it and gauging where you're at on a daily, weekly schedule, um, just get that 1% better all the time. There you go. All right, guys, again, honoring your time. Hope you found value today. Have a blessed one. Have a good one.